1998, James Thompson published the, the first paper about creating human embryonic stem cells uh, in the laboratory. He was at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. So that triggered a public discussion of the topic, and the question then arose, could NIH fund studies of human embryonic stem cell research? James Thompson had gotten re his funding from private sources, uh, from uh, one major biotech firm in particular, and from uh, a Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin-related foundation. So he didn't have NIH funding to do uh, the, the work that created the human embryonic stem cells. When George W. Bush took office in early 2001, he decided to make human embryonic stem cell research one of his primary domestic issues. And for months, he and his advisors studied this issue with great care. I, I salute him and his staff for the careful work that they did. I think they had notebooks full of clippings about human embryonic stem cell research, the ethical arguments pro and con, what was happening in the United Kingdom in this field. In July of that year, I only found this out later, um, President Bush invited Leon Cass and Daniel Callahan to come to the Oval Office and talk about the ethical issues surrounding this field of research uh, with him. They talked for a long time, and at the end of the conversation, Leon Cass told me later, George Bush said, if I wanted to get a different point of view from yours, whom should I invite to talk? And my name was listed among several. In late July, my wife Sue and I were in Hilton Head, South Carolina on vacation. And Sally Schofield, the secretary of the Kennedy Institute, called and said, Leroy, I hate to interrupt you on vacation, but Karl Rove just called, and I thought I should let you know that he called, and here's his number. So I called Karl Rove back, and he said, the president would like to talk to you about human embryonic stem cell research, and he has time on his calendar on Thursday from 5 to 5.30. And I said, oh, well, my wife and I are on vacation in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Could we defer it till next week? And he said, no, the president's flying to Crawford, Texas and on Saturday, and I wouldn't like to invite you there. It's not a very nice place. So I took that in stride, and I said, uh, well, I'll see if I can get a flight back from Hilton Head to Washington, D.C. It was Monday or Tuesday, and if I can, I'll uh, be glad to meet with the president. So I flew back, and as I often did for classes, I prepared a handout when I went to this visit. I first met with Carl Rove, and then we went into the Oval Office. Um, uh, Andrew Card, his chief of staff, was there, Carl Rove, um, one of the people who had been involved in um, coordinating the research on this topic was there. Karen Hughes was away, actually working on a speech for President Bush about stem cell research. So on my handout, I, I presented three options. The first would be that you would say no to human embryonic stem cell research and federal funding for the research. The second would be that you would say yes but only for human embryonic stem cells that were left over, that were no longer needed by couples for reproduction. And the third would be that you would say yes to research involving human embryonic stem cells that had 
been created specifically for research. And then I went through what the various states in the United States were doing. Some states had uh, moved forward in this field, for example, California. I said what various countries were doing in this field. And finally, the president said, well, what do you think I should do? What do you think I should decide? And I said, well, I hope you won't choose the first option. If you say no to human embryonic stem cell research, I think researchers will be very discouraged. And I think the families who have hope that this field will provide new paths to a possible therapy will also be very disappointed. So I hope you won't say no. I hope you will somehow say yes to this field of research. Well, then the, the staff ask really good questions. Are you talking about funding, or are you talking about permitting? And I said, well, this is NIH. Uh, I think we're only talking about what I, an NIH funds. And there really was no discussion about the president trying to prohibit all stem cell research in in the various states. And then they asked a question that really turned out to be critical. They said, what do you mean by human embryos that are already created? And I was taken aback. And I said, well, I mean, th there are some embryos that are left over now. And in the future, other couples will decide that they don't need embryos for reproduction. And so there will be leftover embryos in the future. So um, we concluded the discussion. And I, I must say, I was very impressed that President Bush was deeply engaged in the topic and very knowledgeable about the topic. And this was all about two months before September 11th. So this domestic question was front and center on his agenda. And when he flew to Crawford, Texas, uh, he had no inkling that there would be uh, an international terrorist incident uh, five or six weeks down, down the road. Well, in a speech about a week after we met, uh, George W. Bush uh, really served as kind of a moral educator for the American public. He said that he was going to approve federal funding for human embryonic stem cell research, that um, only embryos that already only embryonic stem cells that had been created by the time of his speech in August could be used. So there was a demarcation line. And I think that was um, kind of a, a moral issue in his view, but also it was politically astute because conservative religious groups could say to themselves, well, the embryos that were used to create these stem cell lines have already been dismantled and destroyed. So no additional harm is going to be done to human embryos in the future. So while we don't like stem cell research, at least this is better than it could have been. The president and his advisors assured the research community that there were plenty of human embryonic stem cell lines available. And that turned out to be the difficulty with the policy, which seemed morally and politically astute. It turned out that some of the stem cell lines that existed um, did not grow well. It turned, turned out that the number was much lower than some people at the National Institutes of Health had estimated. They had probably been overly optimistic. 
So in the long run, um, this policy really meant that very little research was done with human embryonic stem cells with NIH funding.